Hey everyone, now if you've had me before, you're probably tired of hearing about ontology, constructivism, postmodernism, interpretive methods, etc. But it's still very, very important for this class. Ontology is essentially the idea of reality. What is reality? One of the things going into a research methods course, which this is, is to ask the question, to what extent can we understand the social world? It's not the chemical world. It's not the medical world, right? If you say, go to the doctor and they say, well, you've got unfortunately cancer, colon cancer. You can't say, well, you know, I, this is an intersubjective understanding. A lot of people don't see colon. <laughs> I mean, you can't say that back in the day, there was a joke like, well, I want a second opinion. Well, you're ugly too. Uh, but anyways, the point is, is that, you know, it doesn't matter who the world power is. It doesn't matter your perception. It doesn't matter these different things. The medical world, if you have colon cancer, unless there was a mistake, uh, basically you have colon cancer. If you have diabetes, you have diabetes. That's the medical world, the more physical world, right? So it's not really a debate. We need trees to breathe air, etc. These are all true. It's more scientific, quote unquote, facts. The problem with the social world, whether it's sociology, psychology, any of the social sciences, political science, law, which we're going to really get into, which people uh, don't know about. This is very important because we're dealing with people's perceptions, people's different intersubjective understandings of the world. Now, if you've had me before, you're probably sick of listening to Sandino, but he is the perfect case study. When the United States was invading the United States in the 1920s, uh, I'm sorry, I was invading Nicaragua in the 1920s where I lived, not in the 1920s, for uh, a good eight years. Sandino was considered a bandit, a terrorist, a horrible person by the United States. However, once the Sandinistas took over in 1979, it was a very democratic movement, not like now. And Sandino became a quote unquote hero. So behind me, I took this picture of a Sandino uh, museum. It says Sandino vive, right? Live Sandino. Sandino lives, etc. So it uh, kind of glorifies Sandino, right? It's just like the forefathers and mothers of the United States. If we had lost the Revolutionary War, those people would have gone down in history as bandits, terrorists, etc. But we won, woohoo! Uh, against Great Britain. So, you know, George Washington, Franklin, who is it? Franklin Delano Roosevelt? No, Benjamin Franklin, etc. Alexander Hamilton, these people are all heroes. So the, the thing about the social world is ontology is very, very important. To what extent can we understand the world? And as that reading states, it gets into what we call epistemology. This is where it'll be a new concept, and that's where we get into the methodologies. Epistemology says, how do we understand knowledge? Knowledge of the social world. So some people say, okay, in order to understand the social world, we need to do what we're going to do later in the course, quantitative research, right? So we're going to learn that. Some people say, no, mainstream qualitative. That will have area-based skills, you know, ethnography you get on the ground, but it's basically positivism. The idea that you do do cause and effect research, right? But you know, you do it through very, very punctilious, well-detailed case studies. So a good question is, why did, say, Cuba have a revolution and, say, Paraguay of Latin America did not, right? Why is one African country stable, whereas Rwanda suffered from genocide? So, you know, you often go to those countries. You don't have to, but you do very, very deep learning and you get into cause and effect analysis where, you know, you look at the causes of what happens. And then you have the other, the third one, what we call interpretive methods, where you look at how things get perpetuated and legitimized. This is very valuable and interesting work. So you might like take a look at when we do a, a case study, we're going to use documentaries. You know, why did Bashar al-Assad in Syria survive all of these uprisings, whereas say Gaddafi, right? Uh, Mubarak of Egypt and other countries, Tunisia, they didn't survive. So that would be uh, epistemolo yeah, epistemologically speaking, these are difficult words, um, you know, through what we call qualitative case methods. That's how we gain knowledge. For me, the three interpretive methods, 
uh, mainstream qualitative methods, which is basically the idea that you do qualitative case studies and you see variance on what we call the independent variable. That is, uh, I'm sorry, the dependent variable that is the result and the independent variables are the causes those are valuable. And then we're going to do quantitative research where we use uh, what we call large end studies, right, as a way to find knowledge. So it's kind of difficult, but let me differentiate. It's very important because people use this in law, obviously in postgraduate studies, uh, in different types of work, even like Amazon. Amazon wants you to understand if you do a high level position in Amazon, uh, quantitative research, and they actually have good paying jobs. Python, RR Studio, I personally use RR Studio, but I'm familiar with Python, et cetera. So let me outline the three again, and I'm gonna go over them. The first one, epistemologically speaking, how do we gain knowledge? That is basically it. And then people have what we call their methodology, which is the exact techniques to do it. So let's say, number one, we'll start with quantitative research. Quantitative research entails getting large N data sets and putting it in a statistical environment like R, which we're gonna go over towards, it's be towards the end of the class, but anyways, it's worthy to talk about now. And you try to look at the different independent variables, those are causes that affect the dependent variable, the result. So one thing that we're gonna do, you're gonna watch that's kind of interesting is the Titanic. Were you more likely to survive the Titanic, whether you were, a woman or a man. We're going to see that. So gender is the independent variable, the causal variable, and survival, yes or no, whether you drowned or not in that icy water, is the dependent variable, the result. We're going to see that in a real data set. It's very interesting. The second type, that's quantitative research you do in a statistical way, is what we call, it's positivism, which is basically cause and effect like the natural sciences is the idea of qualitative methods. Me, I call it mainstream qualitative methods because it's very popular in the United States. So that would be more case studies. So the methodology based on the epistemology, how we gain knowledge, we can do it through cause and effect research. You look at case studies, right? So in the first documentary we see, it's going to be on Bashar Assad. Bashar al-Assad, the leader of Syria, survived all of these, you know, uprisings. Why did Bashar al-Assad survive? But other countries, like we'll just do two, Libya, Gaddafi was overthrown, and Mubarak in Egypt was overthrown. So you look at those specific case studies, and you start looking at the different variables. And there's a lot of different independent variables. They're more complex. They're, they're interacting. Like one reason Bashar al-Assad was able to survive was the rise of Russia and Iran helped Bashar al-Assad survive the uprisings, right? They didn't participate much in Libya and in Egypt. Second, they saw what happened in Libya, which was a failed state. That is the people, particularly the richer people, in Syria and in, in, in Egypt, which initially the Muslim Brotherhood took over. So then a lot of people said, you know, I don't like Bashar al-Assad in Syria, but we are very nervous about him being overthrown because we don't know what's going to come next, right? So you have different interacting variables. You'll also see the video where you have a very, very brutal attack on the uprisings, right? And you see his mother, the old God, really pushing him to be more like his father. So it's very interesting. You start looking at these different variables and independent variables, the causal variable, and then the dependent variable is the result. So this is very much like the, the medical world, right? We see a concrete reality. We gather the data in these two things, either quantitative or qualitative. And we look for the independent variables. And then we look for the dependent variable, the result. So a good question in the medical world is, does having a vaccination against COVID and the booster cause people to experience less COVID contraction and less 
COVID symptoms. So that would be cause and effect. So I hope you kind of understand it like that. So those are the three. Quantitative studies is a big um, large end study where you take a huge database. Like I think the Titanic database has like hundreds and hundreds of, of, of data. Each person is a piece of data in that case. And then I also run class, you'll see, because there were three classes, first class, second class, and third class. Who would be more likely to survive? People in first class, people in second class, people in third class. I hate to be a Marxist, but you know the answer to that one, right? But it's very interesting to do. And then the second one, like I just said, is qualitative methods, positivism, that is cause and effect, just equate positivism with cause and effect. And you basically look at different causes in different case studies, which you can do for a final paper, which would be great. You know, like, for example, why one girl did a, a paper in here was really good. Why did South Korea outpace North Korea, even though North Korea was doing well economically uh, in the end economically? Right. So why did South Korea overtake North Korea, economically speaking, measured by GDP. And that's a very interesting study. So it's just a case study. You have variance in the dependent variable. That is the result, right? That is the result. And you say to yourself, oh, well, why are these two things different? And there's a lot of good case studies out there. Like why, for example, I'm from Massachusetts. Why does Massachusetts have better health care, no offense, than say Alabama, no offense. So the point is, is that that's an interesting case study. Like, why was the North able to uh, defeat the South in the Civil War? That's a very interesting case study. The North was more industrialized where the South developed based on agriculture, which didn't have much industry. So that's very interesting to do case study. But the second type, I'm sorry, the third type of research is through interpretive methods, how we perpetuate and legitimize things. So like how, for example, a lot of people talk about, you know, we have a lot of Russia phobia in this country, right? Historically, how did that develop? Natasha, uh, Bullwinkle, you know, different propaganda against Russia. Uh, we can, uh, you, they analyze, for example, behind me, Sandino, how did Sandino go from being a hero, I'm sorry, a villain in Nicaragua and then to a hero? Right. So if for the people who do more, I'll call it interpretive methods, ontologically speaking, there is no solid reality. Reality is perpetuated and legitimized. So what's a terrorist is very intersubjective. You know why the Turks see the Kurds as terrorists, but the Kurdish people don't see themselves as terrorists. Right. The same thing goes on with Israel. Right. Is the Palestinian Authority a terrorist group or a group that defends itself against an encroaching Israel? that knocks over, you know, the homes of Palestinians, etc. What's the IDF, the Israel Defense Force? So this is very interesting. You could do something like that. And don't worry if you don't understand it and you're thinking, I'm not getting this, because we're going to see a lot of videos and documentaries that help you. The one on Bashar al-Assad is very interesting, because that's about Syria and how Bashar al-Assad was able to withstand all of those uprisings, and he's still in power today, which is very interesting. Why did he survive? but others don't, right? That's a very interesting concept. Another concept, uh, there's a lot of good case study research on stuff like that. So if you don't completely understand everything now, it is tough to understand, but it, it does differentiate the social sciences from journalism. We're not just doing journalism telling a story, but we're telling a story with methods. And that's very important. And ontology focuses on the extent to which we understand the world. That is, how is it reality, right? Or is everything kind of an intersubjective understanding? Someone's opinion, basically. Uh, or is there a concrete reality and we can be more like the um, the medical and, and physical world, right? And have what we call cause and effect. So cause and effect is like what I just said with the Titanic, you know, did gender cause in the long run, whether you would survive or not survive the Titanic or class, first class, second class and third class determine whether or not you would survive the Titanic. The case study work is very interesting, too. That's more not a large end study and means number. It's a smaller end where you might do two case studies three case studies, but you always need variance. That means they go in different directions on the dependent variable. So like during revolution times, why did say Russia go towards a communist system when it overthrew the Tsar, whereas Great Britain, when it overthrew the monarchy, went through a more parliamentary way. And there, there's a lot of good research on that. There's a lot of good research on um, 
that kind of positivism. And then the third way, interpretive methods, how we perpetuate and legitimize things. You're going to see a very good, uh, actually two good videos when we do interpretive methods. One is the, um, the um, one on feminism, on how we socially construct women as sex objects. And the second is the boogeyman on an election from before you were born. But it's very interesting how Lee Atwater, uh, if you're into campaigning, that is a key thing to watch. So uh, those are very, this is very important. It's actually an important class. I know it's kind of difficult and a lot of people can't understand sometimes why is this important, but it is. And we're going to apply it to law. So one of the things that's important is what is O.J. Simpson, right? We're going to watch some stuff on O.J. Simpson. Uh, you basically is O.J. Simpson, was he, you know, a wife beater who killed his wife or was he a victim of racism? And then you go and you socially construct, ontologically speaking, you create a reality, right, on these things. that people have written great papers on the O.J. Simpson trials and other trials, right? Because that's what you're doing if you become a lawyer. If you become a lawyer, you're socially constructing a case with meaning, identity, et cetera, and then to create a certain reality. Uh, and that's what you do in all these cases. Rittenhouse, you know, was he just this, Kyle Rittenhouse was his name, the one who, who shot those people. Was he this, you know, horrible human being who went to these protests with the intent to kill people? Or was he a victim? He went there and he was kind of naive naive, but yet at the same time, he had no choice but to shoot someone. So each person is kind of socially constructing a case. And I actually work as an expert witness. And I'm going to do a little video on that, which is very interesting, particularly if you want to study law. So uh, that's it for this one. Take care, everyone. Um, and, you know, if you have any questions, leave it in community forum, like always, if you've had me before.